straight out of Norfolk comes the Emira. And first impressions are, it's not what you'd call ugly. In fact, this two-seat mid-engine sports car looks a million dollars. But thankfully, this Lotus doesn't cost a million dollars or anything close. The car I'm driving right now, 75 grand. I know that's not chicken feed, but you tell me anything near the same price that looks anything near as good. There isn't one. This is supercar looks for half the supercar price. And it's from Norfolk. I love it. And the good news doesn't end there. I hate the word, but look at it. It's nice in here. It's pleasant. I've got modern screens. I've got padding on the seat. There's no water coming through the roof. I'm not whacking my elbow against bits of metal. This is bold new territory for Lotus. Yes, on the road, it's bigger than an Elise, but frankly, there are pencil cases that are bigger than an Elise. But I'm on a damp Welsh road, and this is Lotus territory. This car is sublime in these conditions. It just glides over the surface. It breathes with the road. Lotus is better at making cars for bumpy British roads than any other sports car company. But it's not enough for this new Amira just to do the business on the road. Lotus's history, its very DNA, is racing. And that means the Amira really has to do the business on the track. Where at first glance, you'd be forgiven for thinking they've missed a trick. The engine is a supercharged V6 with about 400 horsepower. North 60, four and a half seconds, and over 180 flat out. I know, hardly tear your face off quick in this day and age. The truth is, though, Lotus has never really been too obsessed with those big numbers. Lotus's obsession has always been what makes the difference between a car that's good to drive and a car that's great to drive. The steering is just razor sharp. The front of the car follows the direction exactly you want it to do. Every other sports car maker now electric, but Lotus has a hydraulic power steering rack purely for feel. Boy, does it make a difference. The steering on this car is sublime. Especially as it's been paired with, yes, that manual gearbox. Lotus's founder, Colin Chapman, always insisted that the gear lever be no more than a hand's width away from the steering wheel. And look, and the Amira, perfection. Perfection. <laughs> Price and power, this thing is bang on a Porsche Cayman rival, and that is some stiff competition. Would I really choose one of these over the Porsche? Well, I think as a road car, the chassis is more comfortable than this. It's probably got it licked, and it looks better to my eyes as well. I could make a very good argument for having one of these. The Amira, then, looks great, it goes great. It costs a not insane amount of money. So what's the catch? The catch is this all-new Lotus isn't quite so all-new as Lotus would have you believe. The engine, borrowed from Toyota, basically the same as the one from the old Evora. Same with the gearbox. Under the skin, this is the same old Lotus formula wearing designer sunglasses 
and a fancy new scarf. But you know what? That doesn't matter one bit. The old Lotus formula was great. You don't want your local chippy pivoting towards Mongolian fusion cuisine, do you? You want an honest lump of battered cod. It might be an old recipe, but it is still a classic. I don't need more than 400 horsepower. How fast can you actually go on the road? You can enjoy more of a car like this in more places more often. It's fit for Britain. And we need to enjoy it while we can, because the Amira might just be the end of an era. They say this is the last petrol-powered Lotus. From here on in, it's electric. I'm OK with that. Times change. But when it is all electric, let's not forget how good this car was. I said last year that this was one of the cars I was most looking forward to driving in 2022. So does it live up to expectations? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>